Hi, I'm James Eastham, and in this video, you're going to learn how you can combine .NET Aspire with local stack to more easily test your serverless .NET applications locally. And if you've watched my last few videos, you'll have seen the sample project we've been working through as we've added more and more Aspire support to the various different ways of running AWS Lambda. Whether you're running Lambda functions as APIs behind API Gateway, or you're sourcing your Lambda functions from things like SQS, you now have all the strategies you need to test both of those kinds of applications locally. But there's one teeny weeny little piece that you're still missing, and that is, what if you need to interact with a downstream AWS service? Let me give you an example. In the product API we've got here, this really simple CRUD-based API, there's an API endpoint to allow users to create products and an API endpoint to allow users to delete products as well. And when both of them things happen, in many cases, you're going to actually want to publish some kind of event to notify downstream system that that thing has happened. Serverless applications naturally go hand in hand with more event-driven systems. And here you've got this SNS event publisher to publish both a product created or a product deleted event. And to do that, it is using Amazon SNS. So we're using SNS here as the messaging provider to give us pub sub messaging when running this application inside AWS. Now, one of the things we want to be able to do with these tests we are running is to run them locally. And as I said in one of my last videos, you don't really want to be trying to emulate the entirety of AWS us locally on your machine but Services like local stack can be really, really useful here. Now, if you're not familiar with local stack, this is a third party product that you can run in a container on your machine and it emulates all of the APIs and some of the functionality of many AWS services. So let's have a look at how you can actually run this inside Aspire. Now, unfortunately, as of right now, there isn't a native Aspire and local stack package. So there is a bit of hand rolling required here. And for that hand and rolling, I came across this fantastic GitHub repo that hasn't actually been updated in a year. So there was some tweaks required, but what this does give you is an example starting point for using .NET and Aspire and local stack. And I've ported a lot of that over to the sample repo that's in the GitHub repository at the bottom of this video. Now, if you have a look at the setup here, the first thing you've got is this add local stack config. This is actually going to read any configuration from your app settings. And if there's nothing in the app settings, it's basically going to use a set of defaults. These defaults all come from the actual local stack client. So there is a local stack SDK. There is just not a local stack Aspire integration. So we create our new local stack options, passing in the defaults for our session and our configuration options. You'll notice here that you're overriding the port to 4566. This is just so that all the port mapping works when you run this locally on your machine. And then we're binding that to our configuration and binding any non-public properties as well. So here you're just loading the configuration, either you can set this up manually or you can set this in your app settings. We've then got the code to actually add the local stack container. So we've got this add local stack extension method. Again, this is all inside our code base and you can either pass in some local stack options that you just saw in that last code sample or it will create a brand new one using the default. From here, we then add a custom resource. The custom resource uses this local stack resource class, which is just a really simple local class that inherits from I resource with connection string, which allows us to override these connection string endpoints. This means when you pass this resource into a running container using say with environment or with reference, Aspire will automatically parse out the connection string using the details in here. So that's what this local stack resource is doing. Then we're gonna add that resource to our distributed application builder and configure a whole bunch of different options. The actual local stack container name, the local stack tag that you want to use, the actual endpoint we want to expose. Notice again, you're using port 4566 here. So you're mapping 4566 on your machine to 4566 inside the running container. That's the port that local stack runs on by default. Mapping up a health check and then a couple of environment variables as well. 
So Aspire is actually now going to create a running container that is running local stack. Coming back to the main Aspire setup now, we create the local stack options, then we create local stack itself. Then we're using another really cool resource that the team at AWS has published. If I go and have a look at my CS proj file now, you've got the Aspire hosting AWS NuGet package. That's the same NuGet package you've used in the other videos in this series. It gives you this ability to both deploy a cloud formation template and even add an AWS CDK stack. So we can use this to actually configure resources. Now I'm sure AWS built this specifically to be used for deploying resources to AWS. So you can have a cloud formation template or a CDK stack on your machine, publish using Aspire, and that will publish the actual resources to your machine. But you'll notice after calling this add AWS cloud formation template extension method that comes from the AWS package, You've also got this with local stack extension on here as well. With local stack is something local to this project. And what this with local stack extension method is going to do is actually configure the cloud formation client. So as a default, if you don't turn on local stack, local stacks are not enabled. This is just going to return the default. The default behind the scenes in this cloud formation package is to just use the standard cloud formation client using the credentials from your local machine. But you'll notice that here, if you have enabled local stack, we're going to manually create a new instance of the CloudFormation client, and we're going to pass in the session and the configuration from the local stack options. And if we go all the way down the chain here, we look at this local stack session options, and we decompile this all the way down, we get all the way down to these constants. This is the defaults that local stack is going to use. Notice it's got a default access key and secret key, it's got a default region, and it's got some default endpoints and ports set up as well. So what this is gonna do is that if you have local stack enabled and you call this with local stack, it's going to configure the cloud formation SDK that's behind this add AWS cloud formation template or behind this add AWS CDK stack. It's gonna configure that with an SDK client that is pointed at the local stack endpoint. Now, one of the things local stack emulates is cloud formation. If you deploy a cloud formation template to local stack, local stack will then go and actually create those resources, which is very, very cool. So what we're doing here is actually the first thing we're doing is bootstrapping the AWS CDK. If you're using AWS CDK in your Aspire project and you want to deploy to Aspire, you will first need to bootstrap the CDK again against your local stack instance that's running locally. So inside my actual application code files, I've got this CDK bootstrap template. You can get this from the AWS documentation. This is just the standard cloud formation template that gets run when you run CDK bootstrap inside the CDK CLI. So we're gonna bootstrap the CDK into local stack running locally. And then we're gonna use this add AWS CDK method. Again, this comes from the Aspire hosting AWS NuGet package to actually create a new CDK stack. Now, one of the really cool things about doing this is that once you've got this CDK stack, you then get some extra methods on here. So if I do var bucket equals CDK stack dot add S3 bucket, add Cognito user pool. You've got these default methods for the kind of core set of resources you will probably need if you're building with AWS and serverless. S3 buckets, queues, topics, Kinesis streams, even DynamoDB tables. Now, I would recommend still using DynamoDB local if you're building with DynamoDB, simply because DynamoDB local is an AWS supported project. So after doing this now, we've got our CDK bootstrapped, we've got our CDK stack, and then we're gonna add two SNS topics, the product created topic and the product deleted topic. When this now runs, that's going to deploy two topics to local stack that is then running locally on my machine. When we actually now go through this to the actual Lambda function definitions. Now from the last video you looked at, I've simplified some of this configuration a little bit. I've added this with common references extension method, which basically just centralizes all of the configuration for all of our Lambda functions. Rather than repeating the same config over and over again, we've got this common set of environment variables and configuration that all of the Lambda functions need. Now one of them things in there is this AWS endpoint URL SNS. If you remember from one of my other videos about testing asynchronous Lambda functions with Aspire, if you set an environment variable of AWS endpoint URL underscore the service name, in this case SNS, this could be SQS, DynamoDB, whatever that might be. If you set that, 
that will then automatically override the actual AWS SDK behind the scenes. So what we're doing here is setting the AWS endpoint URL SNS environment variable to be the endpoint that comes from local stack. Now you'll notice this is happening inside a callback. If you were just to write this like that without the callback, this would actually throw an exception because at the point this code actually runs, that endpoint doesn't actually exist yet. So this needs to be a callback that will only then run once everything is deployed and set up and ready. So, so all of our Lambda functions now are gonna get this AWS endpoint URL SNS environment variable set to the local stack URL, which is going to be in this case, localhost port 4566. And then the final thing we're doing inside this create product function and in the delete product function, we're adding the additional environment variable for the actual topic ARM. So we need to set that environment variable. To do that, again, I've got another extension method here for the CDK stack to extract output value. This extract output value is returning a callback that will be executed again once everything is up and running and ready then this code is actually going to execute. And to do that, I'm getting my outputs from my CDK stack. Remember, this is an extension on the iStack resource. So this is an extension on the CDK stack. I'm getting the list of outputs from the CDK stack. I'm going to try and find an output with the output key of the value that's passed in. If I can't find one with an exact match, I'm then also going to do a contains. This is to deal with the fact that CloudFormation adds those automatic suffixes to the actual resource name. And then if we find a value, we're going to return that value back up here. Again, this is a callback so that this only runs once all the resources are set up and ready to go. If I scroll right back up to the top here, you'll notice when I actually created the topic, so I did cdkstack.addSNS topic. Underneath that, I also then added the output. This is going to add the CDK output and add the CDK output called product created topic ARN. Down here, when I actually try and extract that ARN, I'm using the same name for my output key. Now I should probably move that to a constant just so I've not got magic strings knocking around all over my code base. So that's everything there is to it. Let's actually have a look what happens when we run this. So I'm gonna start Aspire in debug mode now. Once that is all up and running, you'll get dropped into the Aspire dashboard and you'll see there's a few things now running. So local stack is running on port 4566. The CDK bootstrap happened, that completed successfully. If you have a look at the logs, you'll see some of the logs in there for things that actually got created. And then right down at the bottom, you've got the CDK stack the CDK stack with the product created and product deleted topic underneath it. So to see this in action now, let's go and have a look at actually making some requests. So if I come over to Postman now, let's just zoom this in a little bit. And we're going to make a request to actually create a new product. And before I do that, I'm just going to set a breakpoint in the create product function. And I'm going to hit that now with an API call, making sure that I actually get the up-to-date API endpoint. So let's just grab that from there, drop that back into there and hit that API endpoint. So we've now got things starting up and running. And if we step through this code to the publish product created method, step down into there, we're using cloud events here to give us a standardized message format for the messages that we send. And then we've got our SNS client that publish call right down at the bottom here. And just to show you what has actually been configured, if you look at the config for your SNS client and find the service URL, you'll see the service URL is set to localhost 4566. So this is going to publish to local stack running on port 4566 with a topic ARN of topic 0A58390. We let that run through, that will complete successfully. The event was published, local stack received that message. Now, one thing that doesn't test, as I've said in all of these videos about working with .NET and Aspire and serverless technologies on AWS, is this is doesn't test your actual points of integration. If you, in the real world, had an SQS queue hooked up to that SNS topic that you've just published to, and then you had another Lambda function consuming from that SQS queue, you're not going to be able to test that full end-to-end -end flow. And frankly, you shouldn't be trying to test that locally on your machine. The hoops you would need to jump through, the things things you would need to build to make that work, honestly, probably aren't really worth the effort. For the purposes of these tests that you're going to run locally, you want to test that your application code does the thing that your application code needs to do. So in that same scenario, you would test the Lambda function that receives the request initially and publishes the event to SNS. You test all of that code. You can do that using local stack, using the API gateway emulator, using Aspire. And then separately, you would test that other Lambda function that receives the SQS message 
check that that function does the things that you expect it to do. Again, you can do all of that using Aspire. And then you would actually deploy the application to AWS and then test your actual application running in the cloud. That will then test that full end-to-end -end flow. And that's it. That is how simple it is to use local stack inside your serverless applications running with .NET Aspire. You can start local stack up as one of the resources inside your Aspire project, set the AWS endpoint URL environment variable to override the service URL for the specific AWS SDK, and then use either CloudFormation or the AWS CDK support inside Aspire to deploy the resources you need to that local stack instance running locally. Sound kind of exciting? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. If you've got any questions on any of this code, please feel free to raise an issue on the GitHub repo and I'll make changes to these examples to try and suit the thing that you're trying to do. Thanks all for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.